there were medical help. Uh, police medical. I'm pretty sure my girlfriend's dead. I got up for work, came out, looked outside, seen a car out here. I came out here and she's laying in her front seat, unresponsive, very cold, covered in blood. On October 28th of 2020, uh, 911 received a call that a woman was found shot in her driveway. Oh my God. You doing okay, sir? No, 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 no. I understand, we're gonna get you some help here as quick as possible. Uh... I respond to the scene. As I approached the driveway, I saw a female sitting in the vehicle slumped over the center console. Her boyfriend found her that morning when he woke up. She worked for a shipping company that was local, and she worked early morning shift. So she has to be at work at 2.30 in the morning, and she's usually gone by 2.15. But he saw her vehicle still in the driveway. Her name was Morgan Fox. Later in the afternoon, we went to the shipping company. We then ended up speaking with Michelle. Morgan had talked to me about so many, so many issues at work. She was looking for her phone in the warehouse, and so she had asked around her, um, hey, did anyone see my phone? And there was a guy there. Larry, who had said to her, Jason McDermott and the package handler, has it up in the sort tower. She went up there and confronted him, and she saw him hide it in his pocket. Eventually, he gave her her phone. She could tell that these three people had looked at her private things that were on there. They were snickering and making like sexist remarks about her. And she was really hurt because she was trying to be professional. She was very much violated. Immediately after hearing that she was having these problems with some fellow coworkers, they immediately became suspects in this case. One of the guys in the group of the coworkers that looked through her phone was a 29-year-old named Jason McDermott. So I transported him to the sheriff's office for an interview. During the interview later in the afternoon with Morgan's coworker, Jason McDermott, he basically ended up painting me a picture of them being good friends. But as we were going through his phone, it appeared to me that he was infatuated with her. I could see text strings and text conversations between them to where if she didn't answer right away, he was blowing her up with several messages, you know. He would call her, she wouldn't answer. And then clearly you could just see his tone was different through the text. So just from looking through you guys' text messages, I will tell you that there's a very different story there compared to what you portray as just being friends. I'm telling you, I know what it is when I read it. Okay. And you may have been playing along with the friendship, but, and I 100% believe that you're in love with her. There's an infatuation there going on on your end, maybe not necessarily her end. I never saw it as such. That before, I said when I was questioning whether or not I felt anything about her. Yes, I did inquire with people, but I was thinking about it. I was like, maybe I do have feelings for her. I wasn't sure, and I was like, I was pondering it for a while, and then eventually I came to the conclusion that, no, I just really care about her. A couple days after the murder, we were able to get traffic camera footage and some local business video footage. At 1.28 AM, we saw a blue Ford Focus matching the description of McDermott's vehicle, and then turning towards the area of Morgan Fox's residence. Rocco was able to track that car all the way across to Morgan Fox's house through different cameras that it was picked up on. His phone said he was still at home during this time, but we see his vehicle 
in that area. It was clear that he had his phone off during this time or just left it at, at home before he left. He thought he was smarter. But we have a lot of tools that we can look at. After I saw the vehicle on the traffic cams, I was able to get a search warrant for his vehicle. And we went to the parent's house where he was and towed his vehicle back to the sheriff's office. Once Rocco obtained the search warrant for McDermott's car, he actually had an explosive detecting canine come out. The canine immediately went to the driver's seat and gave his alert. And that was an immediate indication that there was a, an explosive material gunpowder in that area. A freshly fired gun had been stored there. We started working with the chief prosecutor, Dennis Barr, on putting this case together to present to grand jury. The digital evidence just keeps coming in uh, more and more. A few weeks after Jason was arrested, we received the entire download of his phone, text messages, videos, all kinds of things. It was amazing the amount of material that we found on it that referred to Morgan Fox. There were videos of Morgan on McDermott's phone. Clearly, you could tell he was just taking on his own without other people knowing. Uh, he would follow behind her and video her as she was walking, and he would keep zooming in the video on her rear end. He had 70-some pictures of Morgan that he had obtained, not from her, but through other means. So on phones, there's an app where you can record various screens as you're watching them. And one of the things he would do is as he was watching Morgan's Snapchat, he would do the screen record. On Snapchat, whenever someone would take a screenshot of that user's account, that person would get alerted that someone took a screenshot. And this app that he had on there was a, a workaround that because he was just recording everything he was looking at on his screen without anyone knowing. The jury found Jason guilty of aggravated murder, menacing by stalking, and a firearm specification attached to the aggravated murder. I remember just sobbing hysterically because it was like, we did it. Like, we, we, got, we him. got him. He can't hurt anyone else, and he can't hurt Amelia. Morgan's eight-year-old daughter at the conclusion of the trial and prior to sentencing was permitted under the law to give a victim impact statement. I love my mom a lot. She was my whole world and life. I will never see her again because of the monster in this room. Amelia was very adamant from the very beginning that she would be in court. She wanted to see him and she wanted to ask him why. He, for the first time, showed emotion in the sense of like dropped his head and shook his head down like he couldn't believe Amelia thought he was like this monster. I thought monsters weren't real but you proved me wrong. You hurt so many people. You hurt me and the people I love. I just wanted to know why you did it. It will haunt me for the rest of my life and that life will be without my mommy. She was very brave yeah. about it. And even she wrote her victim statement all on her own. Yeah. And she did a great job. Jason McDermott was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He maintains his innocence, but Jason's not innocent. Jason's been proven guilty, and he's guilty.